Now for this board I did have to remove some of the wires which would be good practice for the predictors I'm going to be working on. So there are these square posts like this and there's wires wrapped around them. You can still see one here. Well, these others like uh, like was here I unraveled with a pair of needle nose pliers and then I put a label on it as I have on several others so now I can finally get the back side of this board may have to remove one or two more wires can't quite fully get in there maybe down in this corner wires up here are even trickier because there's some coax in there and uh, and they're soldered on so they're wrapped around and then soldered like on there which just makes it even more interesting to try to get those off but uh, I'll do what I can at least for now I can work in this area without having to remove any more well after replacing just a single resistor on the board I broke down and decided it would be far easier in the long run if I just unwrap all the wires, unmount the board, and work it on the workbench. So, I made all my little sticky tags here so I can reconnect all this stuff correctly, hopefully. And I've got the board out now. This wire I just cut off because it was kind of short and crummy shape anyways. I'm just going to replace the whole wire. And this one was soldered on to the post here. So I decided uh, it was easier to undo the other end because that's going to a filter cap that I still have to rebuild. So I'd be taking that connection off anyways. So here is what we've got. Oh, by the way, any of you out there that are interested in working on predictors, you get to do this and then some because they have even more of these connections. So it's a little more detail what these are. It's a decent gauge, solid wire probably like uh, 20 gauge maybe and they are wrapped around these posts maybe uh, 8 or 10 turns occasionally they're soldered but usually they're not fairly easy to get off I just use a tool like this like, uh, maybe I can demonstrate that on this guy which I didn't take off so let me set up a tripod and I'll show you what I mean Okay, so I just simply put these around the top and give it a little untwisting action, which will generally loosen up the coil enough that you can get a grip on the end. There we go. And then you start unraveling. Now, as much as a pain as this may be, to label them and unwrap them and so on. The far bigger pain is to reattach them. Quite often these break as you try to rewrap them and also doing it with, like with long uh, needle nose pliers like this is, I don't think it's how they originally did it, I think they had a tool. I have worked on wire wrap boards for like computer IC chips with much finer gauge wire and I know there's a little tool for that where you can thread the wire in and twist it around and it makes a nice little tight wrap on there. It's probably the equivalent for these. However, from what I've seen of other restoration threads online, what most guys do is cut these off short, clean up these posts, and just solder them back on and don't mess with all the wiring. That's probably what happened on a few of these connections I noticed where they were soldered because there were only a couple loops on the post so it wasn't the full like 10 turns or so. Now, so taking them off is a pain but <laughs> like I said the bigger pain is putting them back on and hoping that it will work because if there's something wrong guess what you have to do? Take it all apart again and hopefully track down the problem and then reassemble it to see if it works. Uh, I know there's been some experimentation done by others to make some type of connectors. And in fact, I'm going to do that a little bit myself too. I got some Molex push-on connectors that I'm hoping I can attach the wires to and then push them down onto this post. And hopefully then I can get good enough contact and there'll be enough clearance and so on and they, and they grip well enough that I can use those. 
if not on all of them, at least some of them. Alright, so now that I've got this out, and I've gone through the trouble, I will replace anything and everything that I can. All the resistors are going to go, I don't care if they still test good, I'm still going to replace them. And the paper capsule, there's only two it looks like. This guy and this guy. Ceramic disc caps, very, very likely are okay, so I'll leave those alone. We've got another one of these hybrid resistor capacitor module thingies, so I'll take that out and replace the resistors like I did on the other board. These guys are some type of coil or choke. There might be a capacitor in there as well with the, with the coil, I'm not sure. Those are probably okay. And, uh, oh, and then these coils, they should be okay. And chokes and so on. I can check the continuity on those. Same with these IF cans. Probably okay. And I'll touch up any of these tube sockets if I see any traces that look like they're lifting up. But these boards actually seem to be in pretty good shape. I've seen other boards that, uh, like that Admiral Radio I restored a while ago, which... Uh, it definitely had cracks around some of the tube socket pins and the traces lifted up very easily. But so far I've only had one trace partially lift up. These seem to be made better than, than other boards from that era. I'm slowly working my way through this board, replacing all the resistors with either metal film or metal oxide down in here. Also on the higher wattage ones I'm making a point of bending the leads to get the resistor up off the board so it doesn't uh, heat up the board too much which, which can cause it to deteriorate and it uh, helps the air circulate better as well to cool the resistor off. The two tube shields were really rusty so I unsoldered them and used some navel joy to get the rust off. These are also very rusty, these trimmer cap mounts, but I uh, don't know that I want to monkey with them. I would have to remove those nuts and unsolder the other ends and get the rust off then and then put it back together. I don't want to take those nuts off because it looks like that's what these threaded shafts go down into. And I'd rather not mess with them because you always run the risk when you start turning those things that they could break off inside and then you're, uh, well, <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Let's just say that. Uh, so, a few more resistors to replace. And there are really only two capacitors on here, just these two guys. I already replaced those, so it actually goes pretty quick. But then I get the fun task of reattaching all those wires. Now, I know some guys have experimented with some push-on connectors, and I actually picked some up with my latest order from Mauser Electronics. So I'm going to pull those out and see how they might fit, see if it has any merit. Otherwise, I will rewrap and solder these on to those posts. Here are the little Molex connectors I got. They're for 18 to 24 gauge wire, so you'd strip the end of your wire, put it inside there, wrap those little ears over, crimp it down, and I like to solder them too. Now as far as do they fit on these posts, well, they're a little bit too small. See, these are designed for a square post, and these are rectangular. But... They, fit, they will fit on, and especially I noticed if you go to a 45 degree angle, they seem to fit on especially well. So, something like that. And push them down. So, I need to take them off and just do that. So, I'm going to give these a try. I finished working on this board, replaced every single resistor except this one. It measures good and it's kind of an oddball value. So uh, I just left it in there. Got that little resistor and capacitor board. 
done as well. I did check the capacitors and they all checked pretty close to the stated values. There are a couple oddball resistors here and there, like this was a 130K, so I'd have to use a 100K and a 30K in series. Alright, so now for the fun part, I get to remount it and then hook all my wires back up. Once I do, I still have one filter cap to replace and, uh, and there are a few components around the, the perimeter here. Some power resistors hiding up here and there. I'll check those and then uh, I guess I will have to recoat the picture tube before I can really reassemble this and test it. Although, what I think I'll do is I'll peel off all the loose aquadag and just use some aluminum foil as a uh, as a ground. I'll just use some scotch tape to hold it in place and then we can try powering this set up. I finished remounting the second circuit board and have reconnected all of the wires. I used a mix of the Molex and just twisting them on and soldering. For example here because in order to use a Molex type connector like here, you need a lot of clearance because it's going to take, it extends it out a bit longer, and then you got a turn on the wire here, so you need a good amount of clearance. And somewhere like here where the wire just wraps right back around to the other side, if I had to bring it all the way up here, this wire wouldn't even be long enough. I'd have to splice in a longer wire. So in the end, I'd say about half our Molex and half are soldered on. So if I do have to take this back off, it won't be as bad as it might be. Now as far as how well do the Molex work, uh, I think they work pretty darn well. Uh, so they, they come off fairly easily, but they uh, do grip pretty well. So, so just push this on like so. Alright, so I need to pop the tubes back in and of course get the picture tube back in. And the other thing I want to show is that I did finish with the electrolytics. So the one I had left was down in here which was this big old cap. And now it's just this little bundle of four caps here. I just wrapped some electrical tape around them and stuck them in the corner here. And then ran some wires here and there. I had to splice in a little extension wire because the old can used to come all the way out to about here. And now it's over here. So, like for instance, here's a little yellow wire spliced in down there. Alright, so I will go dust off the pitcher tube and rig up some kind of conductive coating with aluminum foil and reattach it. Alright, it's all back together and ready for another power up. Except I gotta put this back on. Now, what do you suppose the odds are that I did not make one single mistake? <laughs> and that this is going to fire up and work just fine. We shall see.